Welcome to the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games and Wheelchair Basketball. This is Carioca Arena One under an overcast sky in Rio de Janeiro and a women's match between France and the United States of America. The United States, the team you see in front of you warming up and the French on the other side of the court doing their warm-ups. This is women's group B and it will be followed by a match in women's group A, Brazil against Argentina. There are five teams in each group. Four of the five teams will qualify for the knockout stages. The other two will play for the ninth and 10th places in this Olympic tournament. So everything to play for with a trip to the quarterfinals at stake. There is the rest of Group B, Algeria, the People's Republic of China, France, the United States of America, and the Netherlands. It's a pretty balanced group. Fran U.S. And, and the Netherlands expected to fight it out for the top spot in the group. France, Algeria, and China expected to fight it out for the third place. But China are the real dark horse in this tournament, having won the Asian and Oceania games in women's wheelchair basketball. They are a force to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America. And now let's meet the teams. They will be introduced in ascending numerical order. Number two, numero dois, capitão da equipe Gail Gang. Gail Gang, number two, will be the first onto the court. Number five, numero cinco, Darlene Hunter. Uh, four is Megan Blunk. Five, Darlene Hunter. Eight, Natalie Schneider. Nine, one of the players to watch in this tournament, Desi Miller. Ten, Jennifer Poist. Eleven, Vanessa Erskine, up and coming, a young player for them. Twelve, Becca Murray, the top shooter for this American team. Fifteen, Rose Hollerman, only 20 years old. She'll be expected to do a lot of the heavy work inside. Number 23, the appropriately named for basketball, Abby Duncan. Number 24, Christina Schwab, one of the co-captains. And number 33, Mackenzie Soldan. And that's the coach of the U.S. team, Stephanie Wheeler, the head coach. And now for France, number four, Sandrella Awad. Number five, Ume Fall. Number six, Perrine Cost. Number seven, Agnes Atuard Glem. Number eight, Juliette Watin. Number nine, Fabienne Saint-Omer Delphine. Ten is Cathy Laurent. Eleven, Emily Menard. Twelve, Solène Thermel. Thirteen, Grace Wembolija, another 20-year-old who, of whom a lot is expected. Fourteen, Marianne Busso, who's been their, their big center for a long time. And fifteen, Angelique Pichon. The head coach for France is Pascal Monte. So the announcer is just catching up. And they're, they're introducing Pascal Monte, the, the, the head States coach. And then we start with the two anthems, beginning with the United States of America, the Star Spangled Banner. And now the national anthem of France, La Marseillaise.
a stirring rendition of the Marseillaise and the French supporters behind the bench. The teams now, as is customary, exchange gifts at midcourt. Coaches do the same. Tokens of remembrance of this game. The Karaoke Arena 1 was the main of the two ba arenas for basketball during the Olympic Games. The second arena was the Arena Deodoro, which uh, was built especially for the Games and now is down in the second arena for basketball here at the Paralympics will be the Rio o Olympic Arena. So both right here in the Olympic Games. There is the team for France. It is a veteran team, Fabien Saint-Omer Delphine at 44, one of the older players in the tournament. But as I said, their, their real strength is going to be up front, Marianne Busso and Grace Wembelisha, the youngster, kind of expected to carry the uh, load up front using their size uh, to penetrate for the United States. Slightly different, um, Desi Miller, a real key. They call a mid-range player in wheelchair basketball, all court. The United States will probably play quite a full court game, pressing, trying to stop the French from bringing the ball up and setting up quickly. And Becca Murray for them is the top shooter. They'll be looking to make shots for her. And as you'll see in the wheelchair game, Coach Wheeler, which is another appropriate name uh, for this basketball team. Coach Wheeler, though, they'll be setting up a lot of pressure and you'll see a lot of movement a lot of um, basketball, as as you might remember, it on the team on the team level, setting picks, setting screens, and using those to make good shots for your teammates. The only main uh, the only main rule changed to accommodate wheelchairs is the dribbling law. You get two pushes of the wheelchair, and then you have to dribble the ball on the court. Starting lineup for France, uh, Saint-Omer Dauphine and Pichon will be the bigs. Menard and Awad of forwards and Agnès Etivard Glemp will be the ball handler at guard. So they're going with the veterans up front. And for the United States, Gang will be at one guard poist at another Murray, the shooter at another, so th four guards in that starting lineup, and Desi Miller will be coming off the bench. And the new ball introduced for this tournament, specially designed, you see the, the designed for the International Paralympic Federation to emphasize the motion of the game. The other a tactical thing um, you need, probably should know, is the points system. Players are given points uh, on the degree of impairment that they suffer, that they um, that they have, and it goes from one the highest to 4.5 the lowest, uh, paraplegia at the high level and amputation at the low the lower level. Teams are allowed 14 points or less on the court at any time. So the veteran, Saint-Omer Delphine, will take the tap against Hollerman. And it is France who come away with the tap and set up on the attack. Pichon out on the point. Right now, all the French players shielded to the outside. Pichon launches the shot. There was a 24-second shot clock. It climbs the rim and goes in, and France lead 22 to nothing. Underneath, 
And again, the rims treating the soft shots very kindly, and Hollerman uh, takes the entry pass, puts it in his 2-2. The U.S. with full court pressure. Ball goes off the wheel, picked up by Murray. And we have our first whistle of the game. The foul for pushing, not a shooting foul. The U.S. will keep possession. First foul you see indicated there on the indicator on the French side of the benches. Murray inbounds to Schwab. Schwab on the outside all the way cross court to Murray. Murray, great feed. Gang can't get the shot to go, and Pichon with the rebound. Again, the pressure getting to France. Edouard Gomp, no one to pass to. And there's a, turn, a violation on the eight second rule to bring the ball up court and across the halfway line. Schwab again. On the, that's Hollerman. Back to Schwab. In and out, they got Murray her shot, but it went in and out, and the rebound uh, taken by Delphine. And that time it goes up to Awad, and Awad is knocked over. And the turnover will go to the U.S. Great defensive work there by Poist. Minute and a half gone in the first quarter. We're still tied at two. You see, you can see the movement going on in the inside the three-point circle. The French, the French playing back, trying to keep the U.S. out of that circle. The U.S., as we noticed, playing that full-court pressure game. Murray cross-court pass to Holloman, and we have the foul. Rose Hollerman will go to the free throw line. That one's again in and out. Those rims were tight during the Olympic tournament and they don't look like they've loosened up much for the Paralympic tournament. France across the halfway line now. Saint-Omer. And there's a steal. Holloman with the steal. On the break, she's gonna take it herself and lays it in. Five to two. Just too quick down the court and sinks the layup five to two to the U.S. USA leading five to two. Maynard now with the high inbound pass to Pichon. They break the press to Saint Omer. She wants to take it herself. Maynard. Well, she had tried to give her a little space, but couldn't. Pichon, though, nice pass to Pichon, and she sinks it right on the side of the lane, and the 5-4. <laughs> and you see the satisfaction from setting the pick that got Pichon open. That's where the chair went down, and Pichon just went off the pick, was open down low, got the pass, a great pass cross court from Saint-Omer, and it's five to four. And now France showing a little bit of pressure down court with Agnès Edouard Glem. Edouard uh, had to get her chair working. Again, the U.S. going to Murray. 
She's got the screen, she's got the shot, and hits it. It's seven to four. So right now, they're putting the pressure on. You see Pichon, Pichon was double teamed. France breaking it with an over the shoulder pass. And a good one from Busso, who's come into the game. And Busso's got it now, just to the side of the lane. Spins. Up top to Pichon. Pichon with the long shot that's going to be short, and the ball will go over to the U.S. They had to shoot because the shot clock was winding down. You have a 24-second shot clock, and you have to get a shot off before that or turn the ball over. Schwab brings it up for the U.S. Cutting right through, getting the pass, and putting it in was Murray. So men are also in for France. We've seen the substitutions. Pichon. Etvar. Awad. Tried that little pass. It's picked up by Maynard. Maynard with the shot. That's going to hit off the back of the rim and be rebounded by Hollerman. And she comes down herself. She's got great speed, great acceleration. Nice one, two. Hollerman's shot is off. And we have a whistle for a foul. And Rose Hollerman will go to the line again. And a pause being called again. France giving the USA two free throws. Dois lances livres. You can see the importance of acceleration. It's, it's somewhat analogous to the way an ice skate, ice hockey player will glide. You set, your, you set your chair moving and then suddenly stop, accelerate in a different direction. And you see how quick Rose Holloman can get out with the ball. And it's 11 to four as Holloman makes both of the free throws. <laughs> Never like to see yawning on the bench, do you? And it's still the full court pressure. And it's broken neatly by France and Ed Edvard now at the top of the key. Dishes it off to Pichon. Back to Edvard. She's got a shot. Let's it go off the, off the backboard and through. Two pointer, 11 6. Schwab brings it up for the U.S. Holloman getting into position. Look at how quickly she's moving. The high pass to Murray. Murray puts it in. There's another whistle. The basket was good and the foul. With Kathy Laurent into the game for France. She wears number 10 in the rebounding position. Murray completes the three point play and it is 14 to 6. Laurent, she's got the shot around the rim. Nothing but blue jerseys underneath. And Schwab brings it up quickly. Schwab sees an opening, but stops, sets a pick for Murray. Murray cross court to Hollerman. Hollerman on the move, sets that over the rim. Rebound is loose. Etevard fighting for it and will have a jump ball. And the possession arrow is with France. The arrow will alternate on joint possessions and changes at the quarter and such like. Substitutions now for the US for the first time coming and coming out are Poist and Holloman. Into the game now Schneider, you see number eight, and she takes the inbounds pass. Gives it back to Murray. Murray, bad position, but got a nice spin on that ball. Almost a reverse layup. It's 16 to six. Edvard directing traffic out at the point. And this foul underneath, I believe, against Poist of the U.S. 
off the ball, spreads inbound. First team foul against the U.S. Menard to Edvard, back to Menard, cross to Laurent. Laurent's got the shot from the foul line, that misses. Rebound is tipped, but then picked up by Schwab. And she's going to bring it up herself. Big entry pass to Schneider. Schneider's shot is short, but there will be a two-shot foul. Natalie Schneider, who plays for Denver Nuggets. This is her third Paralympics. The U.S. team won the 2015 Pan Am Games, and 10 of the players from that team are here now. Eight were already Paralympians before these games started. Schneider's second shot doesn't go. It's 17-6 U.S. 421 to play in the first quarter. Laurent handling the ball for France. Edivard comes out to help, but she wants to go over to Busso. Busso in the key, pump fakes, and lets the shot go off the glass and in 17-8. That's really the first penetration France has had in about seven minutes. All the other shots have been from the outside. Under four minutes to play now, 17-8. And a great double screen, Murray wide open as she gets the entry pass and lays it in. Beautiful stuff from the US, 19-8. to eight. You see the difference in the shot making. France wants to have a timeout with 3.48 to play in the first quarter. And there's just a, another look at that, setting the screen. Uh, US are leading France 19 to eight. And you see the difference in the two teams play. The US is, is getting penetration. Well, and, you, and you hear Coach Wheeler, and what she's saying is exactly what they're doing. She said their goal is to take away the key, and that's what they've done. That, that last basket by France was the first one they've had inside the key for a long time. And you see Coach Monte is trying to set, set up a system of picking up at the top of the key basically at the foul line to try to get players open as they go down. And I was saying these rims were notoriously tight during the Olympic tournament, and they've been that way in the Paralympic tournament, apart from the first two, <laughs> two shots of the game, when both teams got favorable rolls from those rims. 19 to eight now, U.S. leading France. France, after the timeout, putting the ball into play, under four minutes to play in this first quarter. Laurent driving, she got it was one-on-one, -on -one, and she doesn't get the roll, but she gets the foul. But you see what they did, just as the, as the coach Monte was drawing up in the break, they were setting they were setting everyone to one side of the key, trying to get her the one-on-one -on -one to drive through. She got a good shot, drew the foul, and now she'll shoot two. Laurent, who plays for Club Handi Valide. Another veteran at 40 years old. And this is the second, it's 19-9 now. And Desi Miller brings it up for the US. Oh great, oh good flip. Oh, they left it for Murray, she couldn't make the layup. Oh, what a beautiful pass from Soldan. A little bit under the basket, she through the blind be pass behind the head to Murray, and Murray missed the layup. So France now with a chance to pull closer. Cross court to Laurent, she handles it neatly, gets the shot away with five on the shot clock, and the rebound nearly stolen away by Busso. And there's gonna be a traveling violation on Soldan, and she was double teamed after picking up that loose ball. And good defense by Busso. Maynard now goes to the bench and Fall comes in for France. Laurent 
She gets the inbounds pass. She's got a nice screen and open shot on the baseline. It misses and it's rebounded by Schneider for the US. And Schwab again brings it up and starts things off from the top of the key. Got a, one of the defenders fall has fallen, but the pass goes awry, stolen away by Laurent and it's fall. Now who can bring it up for France? Laurent. Nice to Busso. Busso and it's stolen away from her by Schwab. Pass to Soldan. Soldan, good lead pass to Murray. Murray puts it in neatly. What a great bit of teamwork. Three good passes to set that layup up and it's 21-9 with two minutes to play in the first quarter. So funnily enough, what the American defensive strategy has changed to, rather than full court pressure, they're doing what France wants to do of denying the key to the offense. Rousseau did well to take that pass, but didn't get a good look. But again, rushed to shoot because of the 24 second clock. And for the US, Miller brings it up. Miller still going, still going all the way. End to end layup by Desi Miller. No problem at all. Just picked her way through the defense, laid it in, and it's 23 to 9. Yes, and you can, well, any, <laughs> you can, rec anyone who's watched basketball can recognize that one. It's, you know, you have to pick her up. Someone has to D up. Edouard, Busso to Menard, to Laurent, excuse me. In the middle, Busso shot was partially blocked by Schwab. She's all over the place. Soldan, oh, and we've got a two, two person break. Schneider with the shot and draws the foul. Schwab gave up the shot for Schneider. Schneider drew the foul, foul on the wrong. Schneider misses two. She's one for four so far. In under a minute now, Edouard, 23-9, U.S. leading. Edouard for France. This is a big basket for France because they want to get one in, but it's tipped away. Another good defensive play by Soldan. They bring it up across the line quickly, but Schneider went out of bounds. Good defense there by Laurent cutting off her path down the court, didn't give her anywhere to go except to hit the line. We've got a wheel change for Christina Schwab, who's gone all the way in this first quarter. And you see, Starting at the post there, three defenders, now four. Just setting up a, a roadblock. Edivard though gets in, nice, nice shot. She had a good look from the corner. So that's a better shot, a good look. All alone at the foul line. Schwab. Again, looking at the extra pass really helps. And the US has been making that one. Not having to force shots. And seven seconds to go. France with one last chance. Laurent trying to make some room for herself stops. And that was blocked by Schwab. Picked up by the US. And that will bring the first quarter to an end. 25 to USA, 11 to France. And you really have to say that Schwab at the center of almost everything for the US. Soldan playing some great defense as she came off the bench. 
And, well, they started off going for Murray, letting Becca Murray, their best shooter, carry the offense. But then when Murray went out, Schwab simply picked things up as the director, the point guard for that team. And at the end of one quarter, it is U.S. 25, France 11. Well, you look at the statistic line there and, and you can see the difference in the teams. They've had the same number of shots. The U.S. has made twice as many. And it's not because they're better shooters. It's because they're getting better shots. The team is working better. They're penetrating better. And more importantly, defensively, they're taking the ball. They're taking the shots away from the French, not giving them good shots. Rose Holleran, Hollerman, she had a, a great start to the game. That was the steal and the full court layup. And that's really been the story of this first quarter, really. The teamwork offensively grows out of the teamwork defensively. And the combination of not giving the French many shots like that one by Busso inside, good clean looks. And that was the foul off the ball that we didn't actually see the first time on uh, Soldan. Murray, just so smooth. Catch, push, and shoot all in one motion. So that's where we stand, 25-11 at the end of the first quarter. Awad stays in for France. And they inbound to start the second quarter. Sandomer is back in with Busso. Cost is in for France. That's Sandomer with the ball. It's going to be a long range shot. Misses, but she draws the foul and she'll shoot two. Foul is on Hunter, who's just come into the game. Darlene Hunter wears number five. And the long rebound comes out to Menard and Saint Omer with a basket, so a three point play for her. And it's 25 14, a delayed three point play, you might call it. French coming out with a little bit of pressure now, and Holleran has the ball spinning around, and she's going to be called for the travel. Too many pushes of the wheelchair. It's not the distance you go, it's just the number of times that you push the chair. And you saw as she spun around, and she takes up a defensive position, big against big with Saint-Omer. Menard bringing the ball up for France. Busso looking to get into the key right away. Saint-Omer looking for Busso. You can see exactly what they wanted to do. And Busso misses the shot. Holleran with the rebound. She'll come away quickly. Saint-Omer nearly stole that away from her. Holleran, though, look at the speed. She went almost past her. But Saint-Omer, good defensive job. Murray, the trailer, misses the layup. Menard with the rebound for France. And it comes back to Busso. Now this time Busso can't penetrate. Goes inside San Omer, great position. Can't get the shot to fall, but gets her own rebound. Again, can't get it, gets her own rebound again. Tipped it to herself. She missed three times. You can see the frustration. Whatever it was she said, she was very, very frustrated in there. Three good looks at the basket. Couldn't get any of them to fall. And the U.S. breaks the press neatly. Holleran takes a good pass and gives one for Murray, but it's going to go out of bounds. And the ball was touched by a French. No? I didn't think so, but <laughs> to be honest, Murray was so convincing, I nearly persuaded myself. And the U.S. have taken a timeout. Simply, simply, I think, to reorganize, because France has come out to a quick start in this second quarter, 
doing everything right. Now you were, you could see very clearly the way they were trying to open things up for themselves inside. And Busso getting the ball to Santomer, Santomer getting inside position. And once you've got that position, even when you miss the shot, as you saw, she got. She got the two offensive rebounds, but missed all three shots. And a great opportunity missed for France. Let's see who, what team comes back on for the US. Same group that came off, yes. And you see Holleran, the big, just lurking there, tracking Santo Omer as the U.S. goes back to trying to spread the court. Lots of motion off the ball right now. Murray will inbound. Really done to Miller. Murray, oh, and they set that up nicely. And Gang couldn't get the first shot to go. She goes underarm with the second one and draws the foul. Busso puts the arm up for the foul. Saint Omer was in front of her, making that shot difficult. But Gail Gang did a nice job of picking up the rebound on the miss. But what a nicely run inbounds play. And Gail Gang. One of the co-captains of the U.S. team just graduated from the University of Illinois, where she and Megan Blunk were her teammates. She makes them both, 27-14. The U.S. with three-quarter court pressure. Busso and Gang was right on her. She tried to spin around. Now Murray picks her up on the outside. Busso having a little bit of trouble, but Maynard comes over to help and get the ball. Maynard moving across the lane into Saint Omer. Good play. Couldn't get the shot away. Costa's shot was slightly blocked, and Costa is going to get the foul on Gang. A little bit, I think, of frustration there as Cost couldn't get that shot away cleanly. And there you see Murray with 13, Holloman with seven. That's 20 of the U.S.'s 27 points. Nobody else has more than two. And that's Murray again. And Murray, well, she's in tight. She used the glass. And that's 29 for Becca Murray. That's 29 for the U.S., sorry. 15 for Becca Murray. And Awad, Awad looking to pit for a way through. She gets it to Busso. Busso with some space, but that was cut off quickly. Great Desi Miller, very quick defensively. Gang looked like a little trash talking there. And the shot clock went down to zero before the shot. The ball will go over to the U.S. with seven minutes to play in the half. 29-14, they lead France. And that was what, that's the way they started, just denying France the opportunities for shots. They've gone back to being able to do that, and from the defensive game, everything else flies. Desi Miller from the outside, and that's two more, 31-14. They do like that newly designed ball. Busso. was tipped away, not a backcourt violation because it was tipped away. San Omer now, looks like she kind of wants to do, do something herself. Only five on the shot clock, and the French, French fans give them some credit there. Give them some credit for counting down the shot clock, but that's again, that's twice now in the last minute. And you can see Coach Wheeler it's exactly the thing you want to see from your defense is not even allowing them a shot within the 24 seconds. Desi Miller now for the U.S. bringing it up. Holleran very quickly gets down low. 
Sen O'Meara's done a good job keeping her away from the basket, but there's Gang, gets the layup. Murray feeds Gang. And it's 33-14, Sen O'Meara now. Good pass to Busso. Busso. See, see how far outside they're having to start out. Sen O'Meara though gets into the paint, puts it up and can't get that one to drop either. She's going cold. Hollering with the rebound and she'll want to come away herself. Tips the ball and it's stolen by Maynard. And there's a foul on Desi Miller reaching in on Maynard. And Wembelija, the young big player, case, plays for Centre Federal on the basket, the National Academy. She's only 20 years old. And she gets the pass from Saint Omer. Can't penetrate. Tries to spin away. Needs to dribble and didn't. And you can see we saw the same kind of thing before. That when the hands go and spin the, the chair. It's a push. France setting up around the key. Miller at the point. Murray, pass for Gang, Gang shoots. It's long, oh, hit the glass, went off. Santo Omer with it for France. Drops it to Menard. Edvard now. Wembelija. Wembelija, good pass to Menard. She's got a look, puts it high off the glass, it won't fall. And we'll have a jump. And the possession arrow again with France. Oh, sorry, possession arrow with the US. You, can see, you could see it there. It hadn't switched. Murray to Hunter to Blunk. And look who's one on one. Hollerin. She misses, but Murray grabs the rebound. San Omer just couldn't spin back to get it. Murray. Well, decides to start the dribble. Now she's got the shot, and it's off the front of the rim, Edvard with the rebound, and France tried to fast break that with Saint Omer. Try to get down before the U.S. can set up, and but look at how quickly the U.S. is back to take away that green. Menard, though, coming in, the basket is good, and the foul, and that's what they need to do, is penetrate, and you can see how they tried. Saint Omer tried to come up quickly, the U.S. was back, but Menard, did a great job of penetration and she'll get the foul shot and the chance to complete the three point play. Which she does. 33 17 now. Lunk bringing it up for the US. Oh, two on one. And the basket by Holleran. Holleran, excuse me, I keep calling Holleran. Holleran men. Wembelija. Edivard, Wembelija, trying to get inside the air. She's got in the paint. Shots off. Rebound to Miller. French just turned around. Good pressure, good defense from France, but it's up to Hollerman. Hollerman with the spin. Murray, she's got the screen. It misses, but there's the rebound. And well, Saint Omer just missed the block, but Blanc with the basket makes it 37 17. Blunk had position on Santo Omer. 
Wombalesia can't, well, she just couldn't get, couldn't get past Hunter. Edivard. Santa Mare, it's a long shot, and it's gonna be short. You see, she, there were only four on the shot clock. Probably just a little bit out of her range. And she couldn't put any much extra on it because she was so tightly defended. Miller with the hook pass to Hollerman. Hollerman gets a, gets a screen there, comes right down the lane. Shot goes off the front of the rim. She gets her own rebound, but it's taken away from her by Santa Mare. Up to Wambalija. And again, Wambalija can't can't get past Hunter. But now, well, again, now she can't get past Holliman. She's headed in, but she had to go to the outside. There's a nice pass. Rolls out. Rebound by Blunk. Up to Holliman. Quickly to Miller. Hollerman, she was breaking the whole time. Took two passes to find her and laid it in. That's beautiful basketball. 39-17, two minutes to play in the half. Joaquin ran into a dead end there when Miller was defending. Santo Mer on the outside, trying to get Wombalija. You see, they were trying to set the pick for Maynard. Now Wombalija comes around and gets, well, she couldn't get the pass, but Santo Mer picked it up. And it's, it's going to be a three-second violation. And yeah, when you when you these are the unsaw the unseen things that come up only when you see the turnover shot, but the 24-second violations, the three-second violations, all created by good defending. The untold part of that great block. Santo Amer knocking the ball away. Miller calling for a foul and, and rubbing her arm. <laughs> and then saying, well, it's okay. It doesn't hurt that badly. Blunk cross court to Holliman. Holliman cross court to Murray, who has the pick. She wants to go in a little bit tighter. One just got, had to get it away. One on the shot clock. One Belizea starts it off for France. They come down quickly. Nowhere to go for Fall. Edivard. Fall wanted the screen. Sent Omer in the paint. Gets it. 39-19. Marie. Miller, the foul it went in and out off the glass. She'll shoot two with 40 seconds to play in the half. Actually, and I think it's probably not appropriate to play Mission Impossible when someone goes to the free throw line. And it certainly isn't, at least impossible. Paul <laughs> and Blunk <laughs> exchanging comments. Miller makes them both. 41-19. Full court pressure from the U.S. Trying to get one last turnover. And they get it. Hollerman with the turnover with 30 seconds to go. Miller spinning. Murray. Oh, a good pass to Holloman, a great block, but Holloman picked it up again, couldn't get the shot to go. And that time it's good and the foul, but Wambalija, Wembalija with the first block, and then Santo Mare with the foul reaching in on the second try by Rose Holloman. Twelve seconds left. Hollerman to shoot two. Mm. 
sorry, she won. She made the basket. Excuse me. Time for one shot from France. Wembelige is going needs to take it. She goes all the way herself and lays it in at the buzzer. Buzzer beater by Grace Wembelige. That's just beautiful work by her. And so the, the score at the half after that buzzer beater is the USA 43, France 21. Confirmation of that halftime score. And if we take a look at the halftime statistics, again, it, it's been defense that's been the real story of this half for the United States. The full court pressure, the, the tough defense in the offensive end, keeping France out of the paint. Leading scorers, Murray and Hollerman with 28 of the 43 points for the U.S. Desi Miller with six coming off the bench for them. Santomer with five, and she's, you know, she's missed some shots, and, and part of the reason for that is defending. Look at the turnovers, 11 for France, only five for the U.S., and nine points from turnovers from the U.S. Rebounding, 23 to 15 advantage. The shooting percentages, well, they come a little bit closer, but still. And of course, France following more as the U.S. have taken 14 free throws and made nine, and France have only taken five and made three. So that's the story of why the score is the way it is. At the half, it's the United States of America, 43, France, 21.
wheelchair basketball, the first of the Paralympic Games. Welcome back to the Carioca Arena where the U.S. fans have something to celebrate and the French fans are busy trying to exhort their team on as at halftime of this preliminary Group B match, the U.S. lead France 43-21 to 21 in, in what was a pretty dominant performance by the, the American women. It grew out of the defense full court pressure for the beginning of the game and much of the second quarter and very very tight defense keeping France away from their preferred positions inside the paint Gail Gang who came off the bench in the second quarter and made a few things happen including great defensive plays they got the French into 11 turnovers including three 24 second violations one eight second violation of bringing the ball up. And for France, they've tried different things to try to open up that lane, and I think that's going to be the real key for them in the second half. Can they open up the paint area inside the key to try to get good shots? A lot depends on Fabienne Santomer. You saw her there, the gray-haired captain and veteran of the team. She's the big inside presence that they will try to get the ball. But Rose Holloman for the U.S., well, it... Although she's the big player on that American team, she's been all over the court. Steals, full court breaks, and the teamwork has been exceptional once they get the ball into the offensive end by that American team. Coach Wheeler has to be fairly pleased with them. Coach Monte, on the other hand, for France, well, each time that he's taken a break and, and he's done things tactically, they have worked out, but the Americans have been very quick to adjust to them and take away those things and the French players on the court haven't been able to come up with alternatives. It will be interesting to see which combination Coach Monte puts out here in the second half. At the half, USA 43, France 21 as we prepare for the third quarter of this Group B preliminary round game. There are five teams in each group, four of the five will advance to the knockout stages and the quarterfinals. The fifth place teams in each group will play for ninth and 10th place. The winner of Group A plays fourth place in Group B. The winner in Group B plays fourth place in Group A and so on. The crossover when they get to the quarterfinal stages. So gang for the US. Started, went to the bench, came back in the second quarter. Hoist, Murray, Holloman, and Schwab for France. Busso. Menard. Etvard. saint Omer is not in. Awad and Pichon, and it's Pichon who shot goes off the front of the rim and Hollerman with the rebound for the US and she comes away on her own again. Good lead pass though. And well, Murray, sorry, excuse me, Schwab starts things off the way they ended. The US on that two man break, two on one and Schwab gets the easy layup. And well, nearly a steal, but the ball's too high for fall to handle and a turnover. So in the first 40 seconds of this second half, you've seen the U.S. defense lead, lead to a fast break and then create a turnover and Schwab brings the ball up through traffic, looking for a pass, just dishes it to Gang. 
Holloman, gang setting a screen for her. Holloman shoots it from the outside, doesn't get the fall, and the rebound to Pichon. That's Edivard, and they want to break quickly, but you see they just can't get out of that area, and they still haven't crossed the halfway line. It's going to be an eight second violation, backcourt violation as we call it, and the ball turns over to the US. So two turnovers in the first minute and three seconds of the third quarter story of the game so far for France. Murray knocked away from her, keeps it in play, knocked away from Gang, and the US will keep possession. With nine on the shot clock. Schwab, back to Murray. You see the, they set the screen for Abuso, fought through the screen to contest the shot, but Murray sinks it with three on the shot clock. And it's 47-21. Menard breaks the press. Pichon. Etvar. Busso, she's got a good screen, can't get the shot to fall. Nobody underneath for the rebound, it comes off to the US. Schwab brings it up for them. Schwab, and there's the break for Murray. Murray on the left side, puts it in. They worked that so well, Schwab just finding the open space, drawing the defender to her. Murray blasts past the defender for the uncontested layup. Busso now, good long pass to her. Hoist, quick to defend, Busso. Menard, long shot, and hits. 49-23. Emily Menard from the outside. And that's going to be a foul on Menard as Schwab goes flying. Sorry, the foul falls on fall as Menard takes the fall. And now Busso comes out and Saint-Omer comes in for France. Hollerman gets the inbounds pass and gives it back to Murray. Murray just inside the three point mark and it's 51-23. She's their shooter. And she's showing you why. Santomer, good pass into, into the front court where it's two on two. Pichon, Edivard. There's the break. Pichon, the pass is behind her, but she made it work and puts it in off the glass. Better stuff from France. Holloman over the shoulder, takes it and lays it in. That's a beautiful pass. Beautiful pass from Schwab. And neatly taken. Look at the touch on that. Pichon. Saint-Omer coming down on her outside. Could have set the screen, but Pichon had nowhere to go around her. And Pichon now being forced back toward the half court line. The US, there's nobody inside the foul line for France. They had to shoot with the shot clock winding down, and there was no alternative. There were no options. Schwab brings it up for the US. There's the break. Murray. I think the, 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 the defenders at this point just have to be aware of that. They're, they're coming down. Schwab. Schwab comes down. Someone else breaks to the basket. And they're not being cut off before they get the space. It's 55-25 as we approach the halfway mark of the third quarter. Pichon. Edivar. 
And again, the shot clock violation. And a couple of substitutions coming in for the U.S. And we have a timeout called by France. Running out of time there on the shot counter, turning over the ball, giving the U.S. possession. So that's a total of 14 turnovers so far for France, and still only five for the USA. France were 10th at the London Paralympics and 7th in Barcelona in 1992. They've been fourth in each of the last four European championships. But right now, they're just having trouble figuring out how to get their game together. And equally as important, how to stop the US, who've come out just <laughs> doing very simple simple stuff as they bring as they bring the ball down and getting and getting people free in in the paint so time, france after the timeout france called the timeout the u.s inbound the ball 522 to play in the third quarter 30 point lead 55 25 for the u.s schwab into hollerman it's taken away by saint omer And Omer bringing it up by herself. Can't get around, good pass to fall, to Ahmad, excuse me. Maynard, she stopped at the three-point line. The entry pass is denied to Santo Omer and they go for the fast break with Hollerman. Hollerman's so quick, picks up the ball, gets that acceleration and lays it in. She had to gather the ball in, and as soon as she did, she was off to the races. Just got that instant lead on the defender. Edibard. There's the screen, but she can't take advantage of it. The defense was too tight. Menard now. Pichon. She spins. Gets the shot away. It's going to be short. Hits nothing but net. And it's another 24 second. Well, it went out of bounds. It's another turnover for the French. Substitutions now as Fall and Thermel makes her first appearance. Fall comes back in the game and Saint Omer comes out. It looks like they're looking for a quicker lineup now for France. But yet again, Hallerin, Hallerman is in and lays it in uncontested. It's too easy right now for the U.S. The French have tried to start picking them up higher up, and what's happening is this is just getting past them. They had been retreating inside the circle and setting up there. Fall now up top at the point. Looking for a passing option. Pichon. Cross court to Edivard. Edivard with the shot. Hits the rim. Just beat the clock. Schwab with the high pass for Hollerman, and the shot is good, and the foul on Pichon. Hollerman is just tearing France apart right now. She's so quick to get back down court from her defensive position. No one can keep up with her. Pichon's there, and all she can do is foul. Well, actually, not a great foul because she didn't, didn't look like she touched her. Looked like she reached in but pulled back. Off the front of the rim, but the rebound. Schneider misses. Pichon clears it up to Adebar. She turns around waiting for some support. She might have had some space there inside, and it couldn't be controlled by Thurmel. It turnover goes to the U.S. Schwab. And she travels. On the, on the stop and go. Three minutes to play in the third, 61-25. U.S. have broken this game open in the third quarter after having a considerable lead, 43-21 at the half. Well, 
Pass is stolen, and they're going to fast break again. Lead pass gathered in by Schwab. She puts it off the rebound for Hollerman, and Hollerman follows up. Holloman's got 23 points. She's got six offensive rebounds. See Fall working very hard, trying to set the screen for Bosa. Thermal off the front of the rim, and Holloman, who else but with the rebound? And Holloman can just bring it up herself. She keeps going. Watch her on the outside now. There she is. Took a minute to get the pass. Can she get it? Get the shot free? She does and draws the foul on Busso. She's so high in the chair with the arms up. And Busso from the back has the, has the chance at it. But she kept the ball moving. Man. There's a little bit of celebration going. Again, the foul shot misses, but again, the U.S. gets the rebound, and Murray collars it. Schwab right down the middle, misses the shot, and Schwab gets the rebound over to Hollerman. Hollerman doesn't take the shot. They regroup, cross court to Murray. Murray's got the shot, and she makes it. 67-25. This is, it's, it's just a great example of teamwork, but right now the French defense is, is just flat. There's nothing they can do right now. Awad, good pass. And that's what that's what Thermel was in to do. Oh, sorry, Busso is in to do. But look at that, Holliman and Murray with 25 each. And Holliman's got the ball again and can't keep it in bounds. That's turnover to the U.S. So the turnovers stand at 17 to France and 8 to the U.S. Well, Thermel was getting into position to take the pass, and she was denied. And the foul for the hold, I think it's on Hollerman inside. It's on Soldan, excuse me. That's her second and the team's first of the quarter. France have three in this quarter. Busso's got position underneath and makes it. Schneider. Waiting to get four up as one of the chairs is down. And no, no problem as Murray hits from the outside. And as Schwab was trying to pick the chair up, Murray comes back, says, didn't need you anyway. Beautiful Edebard from the outside, 69-31. Chance for one last shot for the U.S. Holloman, Murray, three, two, one from three points, and it's good. Our first three-pointer of the game at the buzzer, <laughs> and Becca Murray hits it. And it is at the end of three quarters, 72 to 31, the U.S. beating France. And that was just the cherry on top of the whipped cream on top of the ice cream. After three, 72 31. And well, that's, as I said, the first three-pointer of the game. Free throws, the shooting 64 and 65 percent total. 35-36 for the French, 17 to 8 on the turnovers, 15 to 4 
on points from turnovers, defense rebounding, well, 33 to 17. Dominance in virtually every fact, every stage of the game. And just Murray getting the open shots, they're giving the screens. Busso just a little too late getting there. This is the way the third quarter went. And Menard shot was an aberration for France, really. So the U.S. will inbound to start the fourth and final quarter of this match. They lead France 72-31. to 31. Gang, pass for Hollerman. Hollerman misses the shot but gets her own rebound and draws the foul. She has really been the game changer for the U.S. It is a team effort, of course, but Hollerman, well, with the size on one end of the court, the speed in the middle, and the shooting ability at the other. Except at the foul line, where she's had a little bit of trouble today. She's three for eight. Make it three for nine. And she really will be disappointed in that. Edivard brings it up for France. Bosa. Shot bangs out and the rebound to Hunter. Bosa takes it away and banks it in. 72-33. Holloman breaking the press. Murray, underhand layup. 74-33. They make it look easy, don't they? Bosa, the pass a little bit too far for her. She had great position. You saw Har Darlene Hunter getting back to try to cut her off, but she couldn't do that. The pass just led Bosa a little bit too far. Abby Duncan in the game now with the pass up to Hollum. And again, they just set the, they set the breaker through. Murray misses, the rebound comes off now to Bosa. Bosa, it's loose. Bosa comes up with it with one hand. Firmel uses the glass and misses Hollerman with the rebound. Gang looking for the break. Still looking, back to Hollerman. Duncan sets the pick for her. Hollerman goes right around for the layup. It's good, and the foul. Give Abby Duncan a bit of credit there for setting that pick. And Hollerman has had the inside edge on fall as well as the size advantage. And I think we've got a French timeout with 8.17 left in the game, the U.S. leading 76 to 33. No, excuse me, the timeout was taken by the U.S. and I suspect that Coach Wheeler wants to go over plans with her, the reserves will be playing much of this uh, fourth quarter. And that's interesting, too, because what you heard from Coach Wheeler is, is they're thinking about the future and the way other teams play. So 
what is working right now against France is not necessarily going to work against teams who will set up differently and defend differently. And she wants them, she wants them to work on breaks in different pat in different patterns and in different fashions too that they will have to use against other teams who are who are bigger or, or deeper or faster than than this French team. Meanwhile, Hollerman is at the line to shoot two. And 27 points, but a disappointing day at the free throw line. And it's three for ten. Shoot one, excuse me. And it's three for ten. Hollerman to Gang. And they do it so nice. The old fashioned pick and roll. Gang sets the pick and goes to the basket. Edivard on the outside. Saint Omer. And there's, there's no movement. That, and the reason there's no movement is there's nowhere to go for the French players. And the shot, well, again, it's the 24 second violations. The shot didn't hit the rim. But y you could see what happened. They were cut off on the inside by the American defenders. There was no place for them to move to. You want, normally, you would want to be sending cutters for Saint Omer to th pass to people who could get open, but there was no way, no way for them to get through and cut. Great defending, and that's what everything in this game has stemmed from for this U.S. team. Duncan, in and out. <laughs> you, you could see the bench. They were about to explode, and then huge disappointment as the shot came out of those very tight rims. Trying to get it into Saint Omer, the pass was taken away by Soldan. Coming up quickly now was Murray to Gang. Gang spinning. Finds Murray. Hollerman's underneath. So Murray, that, that's interesting. I think Murray just put that shot up because she saw Hollerman underneath and thought she'd have a good shot at the rebound. But Saint Omer took the rebound instead. Saint Omer quickly coming back to the other end. Laurent misses, but it's good rebound by Fall. Laurent can't get the second one to fall either. Hollerman up ahead. Gang with the acceleration. And there's the basket. <laughs> look at the look at the bench. <laughs> As the 20-year-old Duncan. The kid on the U.S. team gets her first two points of the game. It is 80 to 33 with six minutes to play. San Omer in the paint. Good pass to Awad, and Awad misses the shot. And that's been the story. When they've done it right, they oftentimes have not been able to, to capitalize on what was a good move. Two on one now. Hollerman. The easy pass for Soldan. And now the crowd is doing the wave. There are a lot of locals at this karaoke arena. And while it's a one-sided game, they are seeing some, some pretty good, pretty impressive basketball. Edivard from the outside. She can't get it to hit. And the rebound is taken by Murray. Gang. Hollerman in the middle. Hollerman now has a break. Straight in. Lays it up and in. She's just so impressive. It's the speed that it is the most impressive thing, the, the acceleration. And you know, as important as speed is, quickness is probably even more important. And France this time have taken the time out with 5.11 to play. Trailing 84 to 33.
84-33, U.S. basically shooting twice as good as the French team. And the reason for that, of course, is they're getting better shots. Saint-Omer in the paint and can't get it to go. And the other reason, of course, is the French aren't making it the shots when they get the good shots. But there's another lead pass for Murray. Ian all alone lay, lays it up. It's, it's easy stuff. And what, that's what basketball at root is. You watch shooters who can shoot from long range. You watch people who can work one-on-one. -on -one. But the essence of basketball since its inception has always been a team, team game and trying to create easy shots. And that's what this U.S. team has done. Murray again, all alone, layup. It's like, it's like just the drills before a game, 88 to 33. Edouard for France. Saint-Omer. That's going to be short and out of bounds. Just under four minutes to play in this game. It's been a disappointing one for Saint-Omer. You go right back to that first half when she had three shots. She got two offensive rebounds, couldn't put any of the three in, and the frustration was just palpable. Substitutions from both teams. Schwab and Blink uh, and Blunk come in for the U.S. for Gang and Murray. Duncan misses from the outside. Saint Omer brings it up for France. Saint Omer and again can't get it to fall. She was in a good position. She had a smaller defender on her. Steal there, knocked away by Edouard, but. U.S. managed to pick it up again. Miller to Blunk. Oh, good passing again. Duncan, and Duncan hits. And well, the bench now more blasé about Duncan's basket this time. Menard, Menard's shot. Off the front of the rim, rebound by Miller. Schwab, good entry pass. But Bo Bosa knocked it away from Blunk. Megan Blunk, Blunk who will turn 27 in just four days right here in Rio de Janeiro. And France have taken their second time out of the quarter with 2.36 to play in the game. surprised we haven't seen Wemboyoa just behind uh, Coach Monte there. She, she got the, bas the buzzer beating basket at the end of the half, you remember, and looked very active in the French, only 20 years old. But she hasn't been in in this uh, second half. It's very much a game of combinations of players. The point system on degrees of impairment requires you to not exceed 14 points on the floor at any time. But still, she is in now when Grace Wemboya on Duncan. Inbounds pass, Bosa knocked that away, and she's, Buso, excuse me, and she is coming down trying to break. And, and you see the difference there on the break. To, to, for example, Hollerman, who got such quick acceleration. There's Wemboya in the middle, too high off the glass. But the rebound to France again off the glass. Wemboya with the offensive rebound spins around and now has a shot. And she was moving away from the basket, and Busso can't control it. And it will go off an American. France keep possession with 2.10 to play in the game. 
14 on the shot clock after the turnover. It resets not to 24, but to 14. Good teamwork this time by France. That's better stuff offensively. They've still got cutters to pass to, but the pass goes off the hands of Menard and is taken by Schwab. Schwab wheeling right down the middle. Oh, good pass. Miller misses the shot. Menard with the rebound, but a nice pass by Blanc. Miller had the better shot. Memboya. Memboywa. Good pass from her. And there's a basket. Menard finishes with the layup. Better stuff from France. When Boya's penetration led to Menard's penetration and a layup for France. A minute and a half to play. Pass was low. It's turnover taken by France. And when Boya with a two on one. Good defensive work. But France get the rebound. Menard's all over the place right now. Busso. Busso wanted it back, but it goes inside to Wemboya. And there's a foul. Excuse me, no. I'll show you right where I thought the foul was there. But they called a three second violation on France. Timeout being called by Team USA. One minute, six seconds left on the clock. And the US won a timeout, so we've had four timeouts in this game. Usually uh, those are reserved for close situations, but both coaches simply want to keep their teams focused, I think. And that's an important thing in basketball. When, you're, when you've got a big lead or when you're trailing by a big margin, you really don't want to lose your discipline. You, don't, you really want to keep, keep working to get something positive from the rest of the game. One oh six to play in this preliminary Group B match here at the Carioca Arena and the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. And the USA is going to come out with their first win of this Paralympic tournament. Oh, another good pass from Blunk to Miller, and this time the combination works. Miller gets the basket, Blunk gets the assist. Maynard and Boyla. It's a little outside her range. There's the pass from Maynard who kept working, kept working, and then went down the lane and got, got the pass and the bucket. 30 seconds to play. The lead pass from Miller. Menard is back there on defense. Miller's got nowhere to go, but she gets the pass to Blanc, who shot went off, but she got fouled by Busso. Sets up at the foul line. First one's in and out. Second one's in. And the bench gives her a cheer, her first points at the game. Menard's had a big fourth quarter. Cost is back in. Joaquin Busso. Busso. When Boywa shoots over the net, over the basket. And that buzzer will end the game. An impressive performance by the USA. Fourth place finishers at the London Games. And right now, marking their cards with a 93-37 victory over France. And well, a lot of frustration, obviously, for the French there, but in the end, nothing much that they could do. The American, well, you might look and say 93 points, an incredible offensive performance, but it was really keyed by their defensive performance. 
and by their transition game, which bought them an awful lot of good looks at the basket, breakaways, two-on-ones, open looks, and an impressive performance from start to finish by the USA, and Coach Stephanie Wheeler has got to be pleased with that effort from her team. And well, it's not just the American fans who are applauding as they leave the court. And for France, well, they're going to have to do a little bit of, um, I think, reorganization for their next game. They won't face from the relentless full court pressure from other teams, and their game is to set up down court. Uh, but they may have to rethink how they get the ball down court and how they can get set up under the basket in those positions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Traditional high-fiving. Everybody high-fives everybody. And the French getting a, a very nice round of applause from this crowd. You can see how big this crowd is here at the Karaoke Arena 1 in the Olympic Park. Be interesting to see what the final statistic line looks like. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be obviously complete domination by the U.S. But but the most interesting statistic will be turnovers, which in the end, 23 by France and 11 by the U.S. So uh, three of them coming in the, the last three or four minutes of the game. 11 steals for the U.S. as well, and. As I was saying, getting those open looks, open shots, 35 assists by the U.S. That's an incredible total for any basketball game. Well, a story of a total dominance in this game by the United States, shooting 64% from the floor, 35 assists, a 45 to 28 rebounding margin over France, and forcing 23 turnovers by the French. The end result of that for the United States, a comprehensive victory, 93-37. The leading point scorers for the U.S., Murray with 36 and Holloman with 29. So between them, 65 of those 93 points. But the story of the game was one of dominance. And the final score, USA 93, France 37. Thank <laughs> you. 